Hey gang, I'm back. We're talking about stress transformation and this really is a continuation from the last video. In the last video, we talked about the stress transform equations. These top three equations here, okay? <clears throat> now, we talked about stress. We said stress is directional. So if I have a stress element, as I start to rotate it, then... That's wrong. Stripes is stressed out. He needs some help with stress equations too. Do you need stress equation help? Okay, let's go. <laughs> okay, you gotta go out. Come on. You gotta go out. Come on, you gotta go out. Okay, come on. All right, we said stress is directional. So as I start to rotate a stress element, right, these numbers, the normal stresses, and these numbers, the shear stresses, start to change. They'll go up, they'll go down, but what they'll eventually do is they'll go to a maximum place. And then once they get to a maximum, just think about like if I'm going to throw a ball. If I throw it at 45 degrees, I'm going to get maximum. If I throw it any higher than that, I'm going to get less. If I throw it any lower than that, I'm going to get less distance, right? Same thing for stress. Stress is maximum at 45 degrees. So if I go to 45 degrees, well, that's not true. So same thing for stress. Stress, there is a direction where the, st the normal stress is going to be maximum, and there is another direction where shear stress is going to be maximum, okay? So last time we just found out, let's just transform this to some random angle, right? And we could use these equations to transform it to any angle in the world we want, and I'll tell you what the new sigma x is and the new sigma y is, okay? But in this lesson, we're really focused on finding what are those maximum numbers? When is this maximum? Uh, when is that maximum? Okay? And we have a new set of equations. Again, can I remember all of these equations? Heck no. I can't remember them. I've been doing this for 20 years. Can't remember this. Okay? So there's a better way coming. And it's coming in the next video. And it's called Moore Circle. It's a graphic method. That I can remember. I can get these same numbers using that method. So you don't have to use this. But for some reason, Johnny Weeksauce, the super student, wants to use equations because some professors, I being one of those, will let my students have an equation sheet, the one in the front of the book. And if you're allowed to do that, then you have these equations and it's just a matter of plug and chug. But I don't think you get a physical understanding about what's really going on. So not a fan of using the equations. Personally, I hate it. Uh, I wish that, you know, I'm, I've been dreading making this video, but here we are, okay? So the maximum equations. The first two here are to find theta P and theta S. Now, we're going to need those down here on part C when it says specify the orientation. So what is the orientation of the stress element to find the principal stresses? What is the orientation of the element to find maximum shear stresses? Those two orientations are called theta P, that's for principal stresses, and theta S, that's an S, not a 5, an S, for maximum shear stress angles, okay? And I'm going to show you how to find those angles. Well, there's the equations right there. Notice that this equation and this equation are the same except for the second one here, the shear stress, is the negative inverse. This whole thing is just flipped over, isn't it? Same equation, but the negative inverse, okay? Then here's an equation to find tau max. That is maximum shear stress. That's the equation to find it right there, okay? And then kind of stuck beside him over here, this long equation here on the bottom. That's the equation to find the principal stresses. That is the maximum and the minimum stresses that this can be. Maximum, minimum right, or, ma or maximum minimum. 
And we call those theta 1, theta 2. So those principal stresses are called theta 1 and theta 2. Okay. Now, <clears throat> there's a couple of nuggets here. Number one, when I am at principal stress, this is always, always, okay? When, I'm at, when I am at principal stress, tau will be equal to zero, always, okay? So when I, when I find these guys, that one is zero, okay? When, I, when, I'm at, when I'm at that guy, then normal stress, maybe he's zero. No, he's not zero. When I'm at tau max, normal stress is called sigma average. Now, sigma average is pretty easy to find. It's that plus that divided by two, right? That's sigma average, okay? And, it, and, and the, uh, when you're here, sigma average, your stress element, this one and this one, will be exactly the same. This is sigma average. This is the same as that. They're both average value, okay? So there's a couple of little uh, secret little nuggets. Let me give you one more little pro tip, okay? We've been kind of going on, we've been talking about this guy right here. Tau XY. Have you ever seen that? And you're wondering, why do they call it XY? Here's the little secret nugget. This is a little secret decoder ring. This is only for the pros, okay? Amateurs, tune out. X is the face, okay? And Y is the direction. Okay, so when I'm talking about this guy right here, this vector right here, it's on the X face. And it's pointed in the y direction. So I have tau x y. So what would this guy right here be called? He's on the y face. He's in the x direction. So that would be tau y x, right? Then you can have tau x z, tau y z, tau z y, right? You can get all kinds of different ones. But that little notation, this little notation right there, that's the face. That's the direction. There's your little secret nugget of the day. Okay, so... With that behind us, okay, with that behind us, let's, let's start going over here. Now, what I've got here is this. Sigma x is equal to 45 megapascals. Sigma y is equal to, look, it's in compression. What does that mean? It's negative, okay? And then, of course, tau xy. Now, we got to tell if that's positive or negative. We always look at the x phase. And which direction does this arrow rotate my little stress element? That's going this way. That's rotating me counterclockwise. Counterclockwise is positive, isn't it? So that's going to be, so tau xy is equal to positive 30 megapascals, okay? So there's our three numbers that are going to go into Bam, bam, those equations down there, okay? So let's just start off with part A. What are the principal stresses? All right. We're going to use this jumbo equation down here, and notice what you've got. Sigma x plus sigma y divided by 2, and then plus minus. The plus is going to be sigma 1. The minus is going to be sigma 2. That's it, okay? So let's do it right quick, and let's see if we can find that. So... Sigma 1, sigma 2 is equal to, right, sigma x, 45, plus sigma y, uh, minus 60, divided by 2. Well, let's, do, let's put minus, or plus there, rather. Okay, and then plus minus square root of sigma x minus sigma y. So 45 minus, minus 60 divided by 2, quantity squared, plus tau xy squared. Okay, right? Okay, calculator, what do you got for me here today? Oh, on, I can't turn it on today. There it goes. Okay. 45 minus 60. 45 minus 60 equals... Divided by 2 equals negative 7.5 plus or minus, uh, what do we got over here? The square root of minus of minus turns into a positive. So that's a, what, 105 divided by 2? 105 divided by 2 equals and then squared, right, plus 30 squared equals 
36, 56.25, and then I'm gonna square root that, right? Second, square root, second, answer equals 60.47, okay? So here we go. So from this, this is sigma one, sigma two, we get this. Sigma one, the principal stress, is equal to what? 60.46 minus uh, 7.5. 52.96, let's call it 53, shall we? Okay, sigma two is equal to um, 7.5 plus 60.47. 67.97, let's call it negative 68, okay? You with me on that? Minus and a minus make a big minus, right? That guy, okay? So there's sigma one and sigma two, our principal stresses. And that's how you find those, okay? Now, now that I have those, okay, let's... Um, well, let's find the next thing. Let's find maximum in-plane shear stress. What the heck? Tau xy max is equal to, here's my equation right there, sigma x minus sigma y over 2, okay? So sigma x, 45, minus sigma y, minus 60, divided by 2, and then square all of that right, plus 30 squared, and then square root, okay? What's that gonna be? So that's, again, 105 divided by two, 105 divided by two equals, you know what it's gonna be? This right here and that right there is the same. It's gonna be 60.47, isn't it? Tau xy, well, let's write it up here. Tau uh, xy max, is equal to 60.47, okay? There you go. Are you with me on that? So far, so good. We see how to calculate those guys, right? So that's part A and part B. Now let's do this, just let's, let's clear up a little more confusion, okay? And let's draw a stress element, okay? Number one. I'm going to draw a stress element for principal stress. Is it LE or AL? I don't know. Okay, I think it's AL. Here we go. Sigma 1 and sigma 2. Okay, here's my new stress element. Well, one of them's going to be one of them's going to be negative, isn't it? How do I know which one sigma x is and how, what, which one sigma y? Because I just got a one and two. How do I know which one to put on the x face, which one to put on the y face? Well, I'll tell you how to do that. And as soon as we do one more thing and we find, let's find that orientation for the principal stresses for this guy, okay? And the orientation for the principal stresses is this top equation here, right? Which is what? Tan. 2 theta p is equal to tau xy, 30, divided by sigma x minus sigma y, 45, minus minus 60, uh, divided by 2. Okay? So again, that's 105 divided by 2, 105 divided by 2 equal, oh, clear, 105 divided by 2 equals 52.5, and then 30 divided by that, 0.5714, so tan inverse of 0.5714 is equal to 2 theta p, right? So I'm going to inverse tan that, whoop, whoop. Second answer equals, so I got 29 degrees, and then I'm going to divide that by 2, divided by 2, and I get this, theta p is equal to, 14.87, okay? So what does that say? That says I need to take that stress element and rotate it 
Now I got a positive 14.87, so what does that mean? Then I'm gonna rotate it in the positive direction. That is this way, 14.87 degrees, okay? Now it's also acceptable and, and actually proper to have two angles on this because I can get to the principal stresses by rotating this way or by rotating that way because both of those are gonna be principal stresses. Okay, so if this one is sigma x, then this one down here is sigma y, and those two are 90 degrees apart, so guess what this angle right here is? Okay, it's going to be 90 minus 14.87, okay, which is 75.13 degrees. Okay, and so sigma p, I would write it like this. I would write it like this. Theta p, theta p, theta p is equal to 14.87 degrees, comma, and then the 75, which direction did I have to rotate to get there? Remember, this is the positive direction of rotation, zero degrees, 90 degrees. This is the negative rotation degree or uh, uh, direction. So I'm gonna put negative. 75.13 degrees. That's the proper way to write that, okay? So now I've got both those angles. Now let's go back. On this stress element, right, which is this new guy here, sigma x. Is sigma x 53 or is sigma x negative 68? Well, I don't know. Well, let's look at this equation up here, okay? Uh, if I take the numbers that I just got and I plug into here and I put in the angle here, right, it will output me a number over here. And if I take this top equation, you can try this on your own, okay? If I take this number up here and I put in for sigma x, 53, no, I'm sorry, Boom. I put in sigma x, because this is not prime, this is untransformed, right? I put in 45. I put in minus 60 there, 45 there, minus 60 there. I put in 14.87 there, and 14.87 there. What does sigma x prime give you? What does it output? I'll tell you what it outputs, 53, okay? So this guy here is 53, let's put it over here, 53 megapascals. And this guy up here in compression, right, is negative, no, we don't have to put a negative, do we? 68 megapascals. Why didn't you put a negative? Because the arrow tells me it's in compression, and I know that compression is negative, right? So if I put a negative there, it's almost like having a double negative, isn't it? This is a lot to follow, isn't it, y'all? Are you sticking with me? So that would be my stress element for the principal stresses. What would the shear stress be on that? <laughs> Trick question, right? Did you fall for it? Trick question, remember when you're at the principal stress, which is these guys, which is those guys, tau is zero. It's zero. It's a trick. It's a trap. That's what Admiral Ackbar would say, okay? So notice this. These two angles right here for the principal stresses always, always, always add up to 90 degrees, okay? Because one's x and one's y, right? All right, so now that we found that, let's find one more thing, and let's find this guy. What is the angle where tau max occurs? Because it does not occur at 14.87. Now, I already know because I, because I know. I already know the angle, but let's see if we can calculate it, okay? Let's erase something here, okay? Let's erase all of this, okay? And you know what, we'll erase, uh, yeah, we'll erase this too. You have the luxury of just rewinding if you got lost, don't you? That's so nice. I know, right? Okay, so here we go. We're doing this guy down here, okay? So tan to theta s, this is not theta p, is equal to, okay, here we go, the negative, it's the negative reciprocal of this top guy, isn't it? Who's on the bottom down here? 30. 
Who's on the top? Sigma X minus Sigma Y. So 45 minus a minus 60. And then all of that divided by 2. Okay. All right, what is that? Minus a minus is a plus. So again, that's 105 divided by 2 equals not 3.16. 105 divided by 2 equals 52.5. Divided by 30 equals 1.75, so that's negative 1.75. So if we take the tan inverse of that equals 2 theta s, so inverse tan of that, uh, uh oh, I did it wrong. Inverse tan of negative 1.75 equals, there we go. And then divided by 2, right? Divided by 2 equals. So theta s is equal to negative 30.12 degrees. There you go. So what does that say? You want to get to the maximum, the maximum shear stress, you got to do this. Here's 0 degrees, right? Here's the new one, the new angle. You got to go this way. 30.12 degrees, right? Negative, which means you've got to rotate clockwise. So now this is my X face, right? This is my Y face. Now, remember what we said. What are these two guys here? What are those two guys? Well, you add these two together. 45 plus negative 60 is how much? Negative 15. Negative 15 divided by 2 is how much? Woo! 7.5 to the negative. What does negative mean? Well, I drew it wrong is what it means. I drew it in tension, didn't I? But guess what? It's in compression. It's in compression and compression and compression. Okay? So, same as we did down there. Guess what? This is up here. Whoop. This is the other theta s angle. Okay? And it's just what? It's 90 minus. 30.12, answer, which is, oh, 90 minus 30.12, 59.88. Okay, so just like we did down here, watch this, theta s is equal to negative 30.12 degrees, comma, 59.88. 8 degrees, okay? I gave both of those angles. Now, one more thing here. This is true always, okay? What is that plus that? 45 degrees. Those two always add up to 45 degrees. So the difference between the theta P angle and the theta S angle is always 45 degrees in real world degrees, okay? All right, and notice this, right? When I'm at the maximum shear stress, which is what? Maximum shear stress. How big was it? On the X face, did we figure that? Oh, there it is right there. We got a positive, so on the X face, it goes like this. Uh, 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 uh. I'm going to put it over here. 60.47 megapascals, right? And when I'm at maximum shear stress, right? These two here are always the same, and they are called average shear stress. And it's, again, it's just sigma x plus sigma y divided by 2, okay? All right, I think that answers all the questions that we had asked to us here. I hate this method, y'all. In the next video, we got something called Moore Circle coming up. I've been telling you about it. It's going to make all these equations go away, okay? Good luck trying to memorize all that. I can't do it. But if, it, if that is not your cup of tea, then more circle is going to be our favorite thing. So wait till you see what's coming up in the next video. Hope this helps. See you next time.